Newsmax TV's continuing coverage of America Votes 2016 rolls on on this night when Donald Trump goes five for five in the Republican column. All five of those East Coast states now belong to the Donald. And you have a chance to be a part of our conversation and make sure that your voice is heard. We're taking your calls at 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629. It's great to have you join us to uh, converse with our panelists because here uh, you truly have a voice. We're not here at Newsmax TV to tell you what to think. Instead, we're inviting you to call in and share your views with us because at Newsmax TV, we are truly America's forum. And here as our forum guests tonight, as we continue on, from Connecticut via Skype, former New York Lieutenant Governor Betsy McCoy, and from Newsmax Washington, former United States Congressman from Illinois, Michael Patrick Flanagan. Welcome to you and welcome via telephone, a guy from another city I know pretty well, San Diego, California. Gene, how are you tonight? I'm fine, thank you, J.D. and gentlemen. Uh, look, uh, a couple of days ago, the uh, Homeland Security arrested eight individuals up in Northern California that were alleged to be scouts for ISIS. These people had already been in San Diego, where I am, and um, they've been scouting the border because sooner or later it was bound to happen that they would figure out that we don't have a border and that they could wheel a, a suitcase nuke or a full-size nuke across the border that we let, don't have anymore, thanks to Obama. So the idea is that the uh, San Diego airport has, uh, and San Diego itself is a threat assessment, according to Homeland Security, of number four on the list. But the newest information is that San Diego has moved up to two or one on the list. We have a beautiful airport down here. And I have a feeling that um, we're almost in a condition red up here on the San Diego airport. You know, you are sounding a cautionary note, Gene. I know that airport, Lindbergh Field, downtown, yes, yes. Uh, a beautiful spot. And you're pointing out something that I've been talking about for the better part of a decade and talking to administrations, both Republican and Democrat. And let's bring in our two panelists, beginning with Betsy McCoy. Donald Trump decided to go where none of the establishment guys was going and repeating many of the arguments that, uh, quite frankly, I made about the border. But he has such a megaphone and such celebrity that it really caught the imagination of the American people. And you hear Gene sounding the note from San Diego, a border community. This resonates uh, with voters not only in places like San Diego, Betsy. Absolutely, and it's one of the major reasons that Donald Trump has captured the support of so many Republicans and independents and Democrats who are gonna cross over to support him in the general election. He was the only candidate to raise the issue at the beginning that we have no border and that for national security reasons and economic reasons, we must enforce the border. And Gene, there you are right there in San Diego on the border. And not only beautiful is it- Beautiful city, by the way, such a beautiful city. It is, a, it's America's most livable city, they call it. And Gene, I, I wanna get your perspective with all the military, with all the defense, and with just the tourism in San Diego, in your mind, Gene, you're saying you believe the threat level is such that San Diego is a prime target. Well, it's number, I, and, and my threat assessment has moved to red, and we're in number one, because the, uh, the uh, airport didn't even take, I sent a letter to the mayor, they just ignored it. The airport has not done anything in reference to increasing the security because they said they haven't been given instructions to do it. And I think that the body bag count is going to be handed back to the people in San Diego oh, that are totally God, ignoring. God forbid, God forbid. We it's, don't no, want that to happen. It's, 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 but it's, you, it's inevitable. Well, you are sounding the alarm. And let me turn to someone who knows how the Obama administration operates uh, because he saw the Chicago way firsthand there in Cook County. That'd be Michael Patrick Flanagan. Does it surprise you at all? that Jay Johnson and members of the current administration are the polar opposites of Trump when it comes to border security. 
I, I think it's more that they are in line with mainstream democratic thinking, which is we tend to nominate people who will serve well and be good presidents. They tend to nominate people who can get elected. It's all about the election with them, and whatever we have to do to get elected is fine. And decades ago, Democrats made the calculation that a heavy immigrant influx and getting them to vote, whether legally or not, will win elections for them. And so it's become a, an absolute theme in Democratic politics to get in as many as we can, as quickly as we can, and get their hands in the airs and give them the ability to vote. And with the Obama administration, you just see the extreme of that, where I don't care. We're, we're going to make uh, it business as usual in this country to fear terrorism because the greater good of having an endless parade of new people coming into this country in whatever numbers want to, legally or illegally, is somehow outweighs our safety. And that's the problem you have with the Obama administration. Sadly, that view is often joined by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and others on our side of the aisle who say cheaper labor is better labor and it keeps another dime on the dividend so the more the merrier and you have this sick uh, coalition in Congress and elsewhere that performs for the pro-immigration lobby. Trump is outside that group and speaks for the vast majority of American people who share neither view and want it stopped. And I and think that's why Trump has the, the jokes he does. About a minute 30 remains, and let's go from the West Coast and Gene, and we thank Gene for his call. Let's go to Florida's capital city of Tallahassee. That's where Diane is standing by. Hi, Diane. Hi, J.D. Um, I just wanted to say I'm thrilled about the results in the five states tonight. Um, I, I just wanted to mention Donald Trump. Now, he's brought up every issue, immigration, uh, jobs, trade, Second Amendment, corporate inversion. Everything we talk about is because Donald Trump brought it up. Then the other candidates have jumped on. I mean, I just think it's... He just opened America's eyes to so many things that we... Uh, I'm 61, and things that I had no idea so, how simple it is when he puts it in our terms to understand... It was, it's been fantastic. It's thrilling, actually. So in other words, Donald Trump is setting the agenda. It appeals to you, Diane, as it appealed to a majority of voters, a decisive majority of voters in those five states in the Northeast. A worthwhile point, Diane, and we thank you for making that observation. And we will come back with Betsy and Michael Patrick Flanagan and you two to discuss Donald Trump setting the agenda Donald Trump in the context of politics being the straw that stirs the drink in campaign year 2016. Our coverage will continue on Newsmax TV right after this.